morning guys and happy new year this is the first vlog of 2018 and it's going to be a slightly more somber affair uh, we're going to be dealing with some of Cambodia's more difficult history which we'll try and do as sensitively as we can So we're off to the killing fields today. Um, I guess it's going to be a really tough vlog, but something we definitely wanted to see whilst we're here. Yeah, and I think it's really important um, for, you know, it's fairly, the Cambodian genocide is still very recent history. So I think it's really important that people are aware of what happened here really not very long ago, um, but it will probably be quite tough. We are, what, about 15, 20 kilometers outside the center of Phnom Penh. Um, this is a site known as the Killing Fields. Uh, it's as, well, where loads of people were sent um, to be interrogated and eventually tortured and, and, and killed under the Pol Pot regime. I think what's really hit home about this is it's actually really recent history. Um, so this was happening 40 years ago. Um, I certainly never learned about it in school. No, and, and neither did I. It was something, you know, it's very, very recent history and I think we either only have such a tiny amount of time to learn when we're in school or we're very selective about what we do learn in school that often things like a mass genocide like this go unnoticed. So. Um, the, the numbers in terms of how many people were killed are, uh, was quite a broad range, but it was something like two and a half million people. That was like the best estimate, but up to three million, possibly even more. And it was killed. about a third of the population of Cambodia at the time. So it's obviously hugely important to their history, which is why we've come. Uh, it's going to be quite a somber day. Um, but we, we did we think it was see. really important. It's a hugely important part of Cambodian history. and. Yeah we felt that it should be something that we uh, explored and filled everybody else in on. I think from what we've seen, some of the sites in this video today might be a little bit disturbing to people, so this might be a video you don't want the kids to see. Um, yeah. So, pre-warning you now, um, but we're gonna go inside and... And we'll, uh, we'll bring you guys up to speed as we find out more. Yeah. So we've come into the Killing Fields now, um, it's $6 each to get in, which includes an audio tour. Um, so I'm hopeful that actually we're going to learn quite a bit more about the history, which should be, should be quite interesting. So something I never knew about the Pol Pot, or about Pol Pot himself, I guess, rather than his regime, is that he was Western educated and was actually I think a radio engineer uh, so when he returned to Cambodia and essentially tried to force a vision of extreme communism where anybody with an education or soft hands or wore glasses was killed it just is so difficult to understand how somebody can form such an extreme view um, again it's something we didn't really know much about uh, or have ever um, or have ever learnt in, uh, in history through my lifetime, certainly anyway. Uh, it's something you have to go and find later. So we've learnt that the stems on the sugar palm trees have these really sharp teeth on them and they used to use them to slit the throats of prisoners so they couldn't make a sound whilst they were killing them.
So one of the sites we've just seen is where they stored the chemicals. So because they were killing up to 300 people a day here, there was obviously a really bad smell. So they would put chemicals on them to help the smell, but also because some of the people that they killed weren't actually dead yet and the chemicals finished them off. So they put them into the graves, still alive. It's really, really sad to listen to. It's also hard for me to imagine how all of this is done in secret. But of course, you know, people would have raised up against the, the regime if they knew that a lot of this was going on. So it was all done in secret in the middle of the night. People just shipped off, given a lie that they're coming to a, a, a going to a better place, and then uh, only to be delivered here to be to be killed. Uh, it's pretty horrendous. So this tree is where they used to beat children to death. Basically bullets were too expensive so they used to use various other tools like garden tools and stuff um, and machetes to kill people um, and for the children they would simply pick them up by their ankles and swing them against a tree. It's really horrific to think of that and it's right next to the grave where they would be then buried with their, with their mothers really quite shocking. So one of the reasons I think it's so important to come to a place like this and understand what happened is, is, uh, is you, you know, things don't just jump from being fine you get a new dictator to suddenly them deciding to wipe out people it's kind of a incremental process whereby there were some pretty horrific things going on um, and it was all trying to force people to work and uh, paranoia dealing with um, dealing with with people that may oppose Pol Pot and uh, and the whole structure underneath that that's led to so many deaths that didn't happen here but then also to the prison system and then eventually executing people when they signed false confessions. Um, I do think it's an important thing to come and learn about. Uh, I mean other than that what really strikes me about this place is it's really serene. It's so odd to be in a place which is like beautiful gardens and orchards and all you can hear is the birds around yet it's the site of one of the most horrific things I can imagine. Um, but it's important that we stop it from happening elsewhere. There's a memorial built in uh, 1988 uh, to house all of the bones of the victims that were excavated from this site. It's predominantly um, the skulls. A lot of the smaller bones are, uh, are kept elsewhere, but it's pretty horrific to be able to see so clearly uh, the trauma damage to many of the skulls. And uh, they actually have kind of a key to sh show you and describe how various tools would have been used to execute prisoners. It's, uh, it's pretty sh shocking and horrific, but we didn't come here for the shock value. It was more to learn about this horrendous period of Cambodian history. So this is a pretty tough visit, but 
one I think any visit to Cambodia is you have to do really I think it's so important to their history you got to do it um, you? but yeah absolutely I was just gonna say it's, it's very quiet in there we didn't record a whole lot took ourselves away when we were recording stuff so we would definitely say it's worth a visit there's a whole load more history than we've included in this vlog yeah there's a lot more stories and accounts from survivors and a lot more uh, description about exactly what happened here and we can only share a little bit of that and I'd rather that anybody watching this that's coming to Cambodia actually came here and saw for themselves yeah. rather than just taking you know a, 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 what we've said for it but you, you should definitely definitely visit I think it's an important place to visit if you're coming to Cambodia but it's pretty heavy going yeah. so I'm in need of something lighter to pick me up like a sugar cane juice <laughs> So we're going to head back to our tuk tuk now yeah. and we're actually, con I think, continuing the day of heavy heaviness, but that's fine. Yeah, get it all done in one day. Yeah. Quick stop for sugar cane juice. It's turned out to be one of our favourite things to drink out here and it's super cheap. So the second stop on our tour of rather difficult recent Cambodian history sites is uh, Tol Slung Prison, which I think the literal translation means Strychnine Hill, um, which is, I think is its like, nickname. It was once a school, uh, and when the Khmer Rouge took over, they turned this into uh, one of their key prisons where they tortured people for confessions, um, some of which were then sent to the killing fields which we visited this morning. So it's another another tough site to visit and we shall probably visit it much like we did this morning, uh, get some shots but just quietly talk when we can. S21 is extremely interesting, um, but it's quite a lot to deal with in one day doing both. Although it's up to you, I guess, getting I them think, both done. And yeah, I actually think seeing both in one day is the right decision. Yeah, it it would be very difficult to move on and go and really enjoy yourselves doing something different after you've seen everything that you see here. It makes for quite a long day, though. I mean, we've been six hours since we left home. We haven't eaten yet. No, uh, we are both starving. Um, well, one of the things I wanted to say about here is that uh, just realizing how contradictory some of these re regimes could be. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, you know, some of the some of the top leaders also wore glasses. Yeah, other people that wore glasses it was seen as a sign of of uh, intelligence and education, and so they they were killed. Um, and the other one I noticed was uh, that most of the survivors also had a either a technical skill. or educational skill. So it was almost that they, they realised they needed some people with skills, but yeah. they realised too late almost. On, on their terms. Yeah. Um, so one of the survivors we heard the story of there, uh, the sewing machine broke and he was an engineer, so he was spared 
for the torture and, and execution. Yeah. Um, and he was one of the 12 people that That's survived. Right. And the only reason that he was in there is he was falsely accused of allowing the sewing machines to break or something in a, in a mm. regime factory. It's just crazy. And it's the kind of thing that they, they have a memorial here which says, you know, I think there's a motto is like we must never forget and I think that's the main purpose really of sharing much th- of what we've seen today. I think one other interesting thing that um, we heard as well is so we were saying we didn't learn about this at school well apparently Cambodians are now only just learning about this at school. Yeah. You know, there are several programs in place to ensure that people are educated about what happened But here. actually there's a lot of people up until now that don't even know what was happening in their own country. And perhaps it's, it's just too recent a history and yeah. too, too painful. I don't know, but we shouldn't forget and uh, let's hope that things like what happened here never happen again. Now let's go get some lunch. called chicken porridge which would put off most people I know um, but it was uh, like actually really delicious soup. it's basically chicken stock with various chicken and vegetables and herbs and uh, I think probably uh, like crushed rice in it which gives it the texture so it's good but now we're gonna head home um, I think we're gonna call it a day there we're gonna we've been editing like crazy for the last couple of days. I think we're gonna go home and try and finish up a couple of bits. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we we'll will see you, see you in the next one. one.